What's up guys, Jay here and welcome to another DRG video. Today we're going to be talking about something that a lot of people have been wanting to be covered for a while now and I can finally get around to it. We're going to talk about the basics of understanding, obtaining, and utilizing overclocks. A lot of people, especially people still relatively new to the game, might be confused on what overclocks are and how you obtain them. It can be especially frustrating when you're trying to put together a specific build that revolves around one of these overclocks and you're not really sure how to get it or how it works. So in this video we're going to cover what overclocks are at a base level, the different ways that you can obtain them, the differences between the types of overclocks, and finally some general tips on overclock usage so you can get the most out of whichever ones you have. So if you guys are ready, let's dive in and talk about the tools that give you nearly endless build crafting abilities, the overclocks. Oh, by the way, if you like this video, please be sure to subscribe because less than 10% of you watching right now are subscribed and it would really help me out a lot. So just click that big red button down there. It only takes a second. Go ahead, I'll wait. job. You're making good progress on your assignment. So the first thing to understand when talking about overclocks is, well, what exactly they are. Simply put, overclocks are endgame mods that you can put onto your weapons that add another layer of both enhancement and customization in terms of how they work. They further increase the capabilities of whichever weapon you have the overclock equipped to. Essentially, think of them as specializations for your weapons. They give you the ability to focus your weapon into a specific role or lean into a specific feature that a weapon may have, making it so that multiple people can run the same weapon loadout but still have various different strategies based on the overclocks equipped. Now I'm not going to go into the full list of overclocks for each weapon for each class because number one, I don't want this video to be 45 minutes long, and number two, I don't have all of them yet so it's hard for me to talk about all of them. But I will talk about the three categories that all overclocks fit into, clean, balanced, and unstable. Clean overclocks are indicated by a green icon, and these provide minor increases to a weapon's effectiveness or stats with no penalty or drawback. Essentially, these overclocks are the safer ones to run as you don't lose anything on the weapon itself, with the trade-off being that they aren't getting that big of an addition in most cases. These are good options to run if you don't know exactly what type of build or setup you want to run just yet and still want to improve your weapons as you figure that out. Examples of clean overclocks are compact ammo for the scout's assault rifle, as it simply gives it a larger magazine and better recoil. Another example is Packrat for the engineer's grenade launcher as it simply gives it some extra ammo. Not game changing improvements but it will never hurt you so there's no loss when using them. Next we have balanced overclocks, indicated by a yellow icon, and these provide more impactful bonuses to your weapons but at the cost of giving something up in return. These are for when you understand the overclock system and your weapon arsenal better and know what aspects of your weapon you want to improve. This is where you can start to see the real nature of what these overclocks are meant to be used for. Balanced overclocks are where I would say a lot of people land in terms of what they mainly use on their weapons because the advantages are for the most part greater than the clean overclocks and the penalties are usually much more more manageable than the unstable ones, which we'll get to that in a minute. They are well-rounded and depending on the weapon in question can help you improve that one factor about it that you wish could be a little better. A few examples of these kinds of overclocks are tuned cooler for the driller's cryo cannon, giving it more freezing effectiveness at the cost of worse pressure management. Also six shooter for the gunner's revolver gives it extra ammo and rate of fire at the cost of more spread and a longer reload time. These are all good examples of what Thanos was trying to tell us. Perfectly balanced. This whole thing should be. The last category is unstable overclocks, indicated by a red icon. These are where the gloves come off in terms of holding back a weapon's true potential. Unstable overclocks have the ability to give your weapon insane capabilities, but at the cost of very heavy drawbacks. In some cases, even completely changing the way a weapon works on a base level. Unstable overclocks are for those willing to be bold and turn their equipment into tools of mass destruction. These are what a lot of endgame build setups tend to use, so it can be a little intimidating to look at them, especially for a new player. This this is why unstable overclocks need to be thoroughly tested far more than the other two categories to make sure they are the right overclock for your build. Don't let the red icon and seemingly high drawbacks be too scary though because a lot of the unstable overclocks are very effective and extremely fun to use. A few examples are salvo module for the gunner's rocket pod, letting you charge up and fire your rockets like a shotgun blast but you lose the tracking of the rockets naturally have. Also fat boy for the engineer's grenade launcher, let it literally fire mini nuke shells that do insane area damage but you have way less ammo to carry around. Simply put, these overclocks are insanely powerful but should be used with extreme caution. 
transmission is ready, the part is prepped, get on board the drop part. So now that you know the basics of what overclocks do, you are probably thinking, okay, these seem cool and I want to try them out, but how exactly do I get them? Well, the answer to that question is both simple and not simple at the same time. Let me explain what I mean by that. There are multiple ways that you can acquire overclocks, however, there are things that need to be completed by the player in order to access them, so it might take a while to actually get to that point, hence why they are an in-game piece of equipment. The first and most important thing you need to do before you can even start collecting overclocks is to promote one of your classes, because all the ways that you find overclocks are tied to that. To do that, simply keep playing the game with one of your classes, probably your favorite one, until it reaches level 25. Then you must complete the assignment needed in order to promote that class and then head to the Memorial Hall. You will need some resources and credits to actually promote the class, but once you do, you will then have access to the four ways that you can acquire overclocks. Core hunts, machine events, deep dives, and forge mastery. We're going to go through each of these methods, but first I'm going to explain what matrix cores are, because they are going to come up a lot in this next section. Matrix cores are what overclocks actually are on a base level. Essentially, what you actually obtain when doing any of the activities I just listed are matrix cores. Matrix cores are split into three different types. Blank matrix cores, cosmetic cores, which gives you some kind of cosmetic feature, like a new beard or hairstyle, and weapon cores, which is what the overclocks are. Just keep this in mind going forward, because I'm going to be using these terms a lot in the next section. First, let's talk about the core hunts. When you promote one of your classes for the very first time, you will gain access to a new assignment called Breach the Core that you can complete only once. Completing missions in this assignment will reward you with Matrix Cores, but even more importantly, completing the entire assignment will then unlock the weekly core hunt assignment for you. This is a three mission long assignment that you can do once a week that will reward you with one blank core, one cosmetic core, and one overclock core. This is probably the best way to start getting cores if you just promote it, since they will get a lot of cores in a relatively short time. Next up is deep dives. Not to go too much in depth as to what deep dives are because that's a topic for another video entirely, but deep dives are end game level missions that you can do that are much more difficult than normal missions. They have you go through three consecutive missions back to back with no break, with increasing difficulty and preceded mission objectives and cave layouts. These also require that you have at least one of your classes promoted and like the core hunts can be completed once a week for rewards. Clearing the entire dive will reward you with a total of one blank core, one cosmetic core, and one overclock core. There is a normal deep dive and an elite deep dive, so in total you can obtain six cores a week from just this method. Just don't expect to be able to do the elite deep dives right away, because they can get pretty brutal. Next up is machine events, and this one is a bit different from the other two. At this point, you're probably wondering what use those blank matrix cores have that I keep mentioning. Well, that's where the machine events come into play. Machine events can happen randomly during missions, and there are several different events that you can get. Completing these events opens up the core infuser, which allows you to take your blank matrix cores and focus them into either an overclock or cosmetic core. When you insert the blank core, you get three options to choose from. Looking at the class icon and the core icon will tell you what type you will get. For example, you could get either a cosmetic core for the engineer or an overclock core for either the gunner or driller in this case. Simply put, machine events are where you can turn those blank matrix cores into something actually usable. Then finally, we have the forge, which is where all the magic of making the overclocks happens. The forge is where you can actually create those cores that you have collected. In order to make the cores, you need resources and credits. What's more, every time you make either a cosmetic or overclock core, you work towards increasing your forge mastery. Once you reach the next forge mastery milestone, you get to pick either a cosmetic or overclock core for one of two of the classes. So you literally get more cores for making cores. One last thing to note is that every time you promote any of your classes, you you will also get one blank core, one infused core, and one cosmetic core. So to summarize all the different methods of collecting cores, once you promote your first class, complete the core hunts each week, and complete the deep dives each week to get the bulk of your cores. Find machine events during missions if you can, since they are random, to turn those blank cores into usable ones. Then take them all to the forge and make whatever you want the most, while unlocking even more cores at the same time. An extra miner has been assigned to your team. That was a lot to get through. Sorry for talking about so much at once, but all the information is necessary to explain how to acquire overclocks in the first place. Now that we have all that information, what is the best way to use overclocks in your setup? Well, a lot of that is unfortunately up to you to decide. Since each weapon has multiple different overclock options on top of their built-in normal upgrades, the best practice to have is just to try multiple different overclocks on weapons that you like, starting with the clean overclocks and getting progressively higher up the chain until you find the one that works best for you. One last 
small thing to mention is that in order to equip an overclock to a weapon in the first place, you need to have at least one upgrade unlocked in each of the weapon's tiers. One key thing to understand is that more complex does not necessarily mean that the overclock is more powerful or better for what you want to use it for. Sometimes something as simple as a clean overclock might be all you need in order to give your gear that little extra boost it needs. So don't worry too much about getting the most insane overclock right away because remember that the overclock you get from a core or reward is randomized anyway, so it's difficult to determine when you will get certain ones. Well that covers the basics of what overclocks are as well as how you can obtain them and how you can use them to make your build crafting experience that much better. If you guys want me to go more in depth on each class's overclocks and what they have access to or any builds revolving around any overclocks that you guys want to see let me know down in the comments. I have some ideas already in mind but if you guys have anything I would love to hear your ideas. Anyway I hope you guys found this video helpful please be sure to give it a like because it tells me what types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time for another video.